Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Nick from Part-Time Pilot. Hope you guys are having a great day and that your pilot training is going awesome. So this video and this new playlist that I am making is going to be all about cross-country planning. Now, this video is going to be on the checklist that I developed for my cross-country planning. Now, it would take me two to three hours and I would always do it the night before. But I had other stuff going on, so I was always getting interrupted. And when I came back to it, I was always taking so much time trying to figure out what I had done, what I hadn't done. I ended up redoing stuff, and it just made it longer and longer. So I developed this checklist so I know exactly what I need to do, when I need to do it. And that way I don't forget anything, and it makes life a lot easier. So let's get started. So I have this checklist here that's going to have what we need to calculate, the order we need to do it in, and how we will get our calculated okay so the first things first is the weight and balance now we want to do this first because if for some reason we find that our cg is not within the cg envelope and we are not safe to fly we are going to have to lose some weight or move some weight and this might involve losing fuel and if we lose fuel then we may need to add a fuel stop into our cross country plan. And the worst thing you can do is plan your whole entire cross country, take two to three hours doing that, then do your weight and balance and figure out, shoot, I need to take less fuel to make a safe to fly. That means I need a fuel stop. Now I have to add a fuel stop in and a new checkpoint and recalculate all this stuff. And that is just really frustrating. So the very first thing you need to do is the weight and balance. Next thing I do is I plot a straight line course on the chart. I look at the departure airport, I take my ruler, and I draw a straight line to my landing airport. Okay? Now, I examine that straight line course. And I, I look at the path, and I see, okay, I need to find some checkpoints. I need to avoid terrain. I need to maybe avoid airspace if there's a class B airspace, something. Or maybe you want to avoid high traffic areas, military areas, anything like that. You will adjust. You will vary your straight line path for prominent checkpoints. And you will have a little zig and zag into your plan. But now you have your route that you want to fly. Okay, so next up, we're going to gather weather reports and forecasts for... The landing airport and departure airport you want to use TAFs or local area forecasts and then for in route you're going to want to use air meds, sig meds, pyreps, area forecasts, winds aloft, basically anything you can. You want to gather this all up, print it off or have it on your iPad for ready to go for your flight. All right next you want to gather known traffic delay. If there's a TFR in route or if there's a notum for your airport a runways out or something like that you need to know this and you need to gather that information next up we're going to gather runway lengths diagrams and other information so basically from your terminal area chart or your sectional chart and then your afd chart supplements you want to gather all the applicable information for the runways you're going to take off and land that runway lengths where the beacon is if there's what the pattern is pattern altitude anything where the fuel is if it has fuel all that kind of information you're going to print it off take it with you or if you have a flight or something like that on your ipad you just want to make sure you have that handy and easily accessible okay so next up we're going to determine our cruise altitude so we're going to look at our our path with our checkpoints and we're going to look at terrain airspace obstacles and and we're even going to consider the hemispherical rule to determine what altitude we want to cruise at okay next up we want to determine distances to each checkpoint. So we have our checkpoints already drawn out. Now we just take our plotter and we measure them and we will write this in our cross country plan. Okay, so this is a big one. Now we're going to estimate the fuel required for our entire flight. We're not, this is not going to be our final fuel calculation, but we want an estimate. We want to know a general idea of how much fuel we're going to use because if we can know for sure that oh we're definitely not going to have enough fuel then we can plan in ahead of time a fuel stop and again we will not have to get done with everything calculate our fuel and then realize that we need that a fuel stop then we're going to have to recalculate all sorts of stuff so to do this we're just going to use the total distance we're going to estimate a ground speed of 90 or 100 knots depending on if you're flying in a headwind or not 
and then you just use a conservative fuel consumption rate. I use 10 gallons per hour during cruise, 12 during climb, and then I add taxi run up, approach and descent, and reserve fuel. Get that estimated if it's less than the total amount of fuel your plane can hold then you're good you don't need a fuel stop okay next up we're going to record the true course to each checkpoint now this is just what you use with your plotter on your chart that is the true course then we're going to calculate our magnetic course to each checkpoint and record that in our cross-country plan that's just the true course plus or minus the variation this, these are the isogonic lines on your charts and then we're also going to record the winds and temperatures for our cruise altitudes. Now we don't know the altitudes we'll be at during climb at each of our checkpoints or descent. We'll get that later. So right now we can just, we know our altitudes for a cruise. So we can use winds aloft and either interpolate or estimate our winds and temperatures. All right, next up, we're going to determine our total distance to climb. Now this isn't the climb to each checkpoint. This is our total distance. How long? How much distance is it going to take us to climb to our cruise altitude? Now to do this, we use our fuel time distance to climb chart. Then once we have this, now we know at what distance we'll be at the top of our climb and we can put a checkpoint here. So putting a checkpoint at the top of your climb is very helpful. Why? It makes your calculations much easier. If you don't, let's say your top of climb is between two checkpoints. Now you have a leg of flight that you have to calculate half as climb, half as cruise. And you can estimate one either way, but it's gonna bring up some errors. I like to put a checkpoint at the top of our climb. That way it makes calculations easier and you know when you're at that checkpoint, you should be at your cruise altitude. So once we've adjusted our checkpoints for the top of climb, we can now determine the altitude and fuel used to each checkpoint during our climb. So we know the distance, we know the total distance to the top of climb. We know each distance for each checkpoint within our climb. And we can use our fuel time distance to climb chart to sort of back, back calculate with our temperature, an estimated temperature, the altitude at which we will be at at each checkpoint during climb. All right, so now we do the same thing for descent. We determine how long, how much distance is it gonna take us to descend? We're going to use our fuel time distance to descend chart. Then we're going to adjust our checkpoint so that we have a checkpoint at the start of our descent. Again, makes calculations easier. And then we're going to back calculate an altitude since we know the distances using our fuel time distance to descend chart. Once we've done that, now we can record winds and temperatures for our climb and descent altitudes. We know our exact altitudes at each checkpoint during climb and descent, and we can get exact winds and temperatures. We can also record our targeted indicated airspeed during climb. So this is where cross country planning may vary based off your opinion or your preference. I like during climb, I like to target an indicated airspeed because usually we fly at best rate or best angle of climb. So if we're flying at best rate of climb, we're trying to fly at 80 knots, then we're targeting an indicated airspeed of 80 knots so I record that during climb and then for descent I like to target an RPM instead of an indicated airspeed this is just my preference I think it's easier instead of saying I'm gonna fly at 110 knots indicated during my cruise I say I'm gonna fly 2500 RPM and to me this just makes things easier so now using our targeted indicated airspeed during climb we can come up with a true airspeed during climb so to do this we use our e6b to convert from indicated airspeed to true airspeed uh, with our known temperature and altitude at each checkpoint okay so now how do we find our true airspeed during cruise well we're gonna need our engine power setting so 2500 rpm what power setting does that apply to for our aircraft is it 65 percent is it 70 percent this depends on the altitude and temperature, and luckily there's an engine performance chart in our AFD POH that we can find the power setting with each RPM. Once we have that power setting, we can now use that power setting in a best cruise, best power cruise performance chart. Now you could also use best economy cruise performance chart if you're going to constantly lean your fuel to best economy flight. I just like to I don't really care about that as much. I just use best power. So we use our engine power setting, our temperature, our altitude, and on our best power cruise performance chart to get our true airspeed. 
during cruise and descent. So, uh, sorry I didn't mention it, but um, for descent and cruise, we're going to assume the true airspeed is the same. We're going to calculate it the same way. It's very subtle differences, and it makes life easier for us. Next up, now that we have our true airspeeds and our winds and our distances and all that stuff, we can now find our ground speed and our wind correction angle using the wind side of our E6B. So once we do that, we now have the ground speed at each checkpoint, we have the wind correction angle, and now we can use the wind correction angle to find our magnetic heading. So we had our magnetic course, now we want to correct our magnetic course with our wind correction angle for our magnetic heading. The magnetic heading is what we're going to use to fly. So we're going to have our magnetic heading on our cross country planner. Let's say it's a 210 and that's what we fly on our heading indicator. Okay, now that we have ground speed and the distances to each checkpoint, we can calculate estimated time to each checkpoint just using distance divided by ground speed. Okay, now we already calculated fuel during climb using our fuel climb distance fuel time distance to climb chart. Now we need to calculate fuel during cruise and descent since we know time and we can get a fuel burn rate from our POH or AFM. Usually it's on our best power cruise or best economy cruise performance charts. There's a little table and based off the engine power setting that we also calculated, it'll give you a fuel burn rate. Okay, so now your fuel burn rate, that's per time, amount of fuel burn per time, and we know the time, so we can calculate the amount of fuel burned to each checkpoint. Okay, now we can add up our totals. We can add up our total distance for our total cross country, our total time for our total cross country, and our total fuel. So we add up our climb, our fuel used during climb, our fuel used during uh, cruise and descent, and we want to add taxi and run up approach and landing, and our reserves. At this point, we'll have our total fuel used and we can de determine was our estimated fuel used. That's why we estimated it so that now we, hopefully it was cl a close estimation and we don't have to redo and make new checkpoints to land somewhere to get fuel. All right, now finally we know our fuel used so we know the approximate weight we're going to land with so we know our takeoff weight because we know how much fuel we have to bring we know our landing weight because we know how much fuel we're going to burn and now we have our takeoff weight and our landing weight and now we can calculate our takeoff distance and landing distance using the charts in our poh and afm okay so that has been the cross-country checklist like I said, I am going to now be releasing videos on each one of these, giving good examples of how to do every single part of this checklist so that you know how to completely plan across country. And hopefully it makes things faster for you and uh, helps you out a bit. And if you haven't followed me on Instagram yet at part period time period pilot, please do so. And if you subscribe to my youtube please send me a message on instagram and say you subscribed and i will send you my slides my quick study slides that i make my instagram posts out of and i make these youtube videos i'll send you a pdf of all these slides it's almost over 100 now that you can use to study it's a great study tool you can take it on the road with you, you can put it on your ipad put it on your phone flip through it's a great study tool i'll give it to you for free all you got to do is subscribe to my youtube and uh, let me know on Instagram and I'll send it to you. All right, thanks guys.